Oh, well, here's day 31. I guess I didn't make my 30 days like I wanted. Oh well. I gotta hurry though. The five guys across the street are catching up to me. And I'm still waiting for dense glass. So and there's not really much more I can do up here without the dense glass. So I think I'm gonna go finish everything I got downstairs. I still have a little bit of stuff to do on this second floor, but I'll wait till after the roof's done. For now, I'll go on the main floor and finish everything on the main floor. So I'll start up here with the baseboard blocking. Just measure each one, write it on the wall, and then I'll cut them all and then just come nail them all in. So I got these ones all cut, put them in like that. And then they'll have something to nail the baseboard to. And over this, over here I filled it with this. I'll nail that up. There's all the baseboard backing there. I also have to make sure this connection is nailed up good. Make sure it's nice and flush to the other 2x6 plate and then do about two nails every foot along this whole wall all the way down. Same thing with that side. Where it goes into that wall, I have to nail up that whole side. So I got this braced up plumb, but this gun ain't shooting through three and a half inches of timber strip. I almost went. This stuff's really hard to nail through though. You try and hammer them in and they just But with a hand spike Show you how good this side puller works if you just go hook on like this you'll pry and pry and you'll never get that out and the head will just break off but with this side puller you hook it on there and it just rips it right out no problem now i'll get the handrail backing along the side uh, they kind of have been putting it at a different height every time Sometimes it's 30 inches off the nosing, sometimes it's 28, sometimes it's 32. So I'm just gonna use a big two by 10 block and cover as much as I can, just in case. So I'll try and cover between like 28 to 34 off the nosing. So I snap my line on here. This is gonna be the top of my block. So I'm gonna use a two by 10. Here's the handrail backing all the way up the stairs. Except when I got to here, I have this block going straight through, so I put that one in there like that, and I cut this one to go over top. Like that. Now right down the stairs. Now for baseboard backing on this side, I'm gonna put blocks in here like this. Just those three spaces. There's all the handrail and baseboard backing over there. I have one more piece I should put in here, but I gotta put that second row of blocking in here. I'm just gonna use the top of the sheet as a line to go off of. So I'll put a row of blocking in there, and then I can put this last piece in. And do the baseboard backing down here. I'll just keep doing that across. Block up top, and then a block for the baseboard backing. There's the baseboard backing all done. Uh, I'm gonna fill in this little space here, but since that beam sits right here, it needs to have a post right here. So I'm gonna double up this two by four stud. So I'll put another two by four stud on here and then I'll fill the block in. I'm 
Also gonna have to put a block in the floor right here to support this. So it's not just sitting on the plywood, the block will go down to the beam. This is where I had that three ply beam in the basement right here. So the end of the beam is right here. So that's where I need to block down to. Now I'll just put my three blocks in here. One, two, three. One, two, three. All done. Now I'll put this in here like that. Now that side's done. Now I'll frame the door to the basement. It's going to be a wall right here. Uh, it's going to go a two by four wall going into here. So I need to put a backing in the wall right here. So I'll put this two by six. I'll nail that in there. And then when my two by four wall comes in, I'll have backing on both sides of it. So I'll nail that in and then I'll poly and drywall it with the three and a half inch strip. Actually for this one, I'm just gonna put the drywall on the wall before I stand it. So here's my plates for the basement. The basement door always has to be a two foot eight door because the furnace needs to go down there. So they want the door a little bit wider. Like this bathroom door is a two six door but the basement always has to be a 2.8. Same thing with any laundry room, because they need the extra room to get the washer and dryer in. So like my laundry room upstairs, that's the only door upstairs that's a 2.8, but this door has to be a 2.8. So I'm gonna start just three inches off the side, off this side. So I'll just mark an inch and a half for the stud, three inches for the cripple, my 2.8 door needs to have a 2.10 opening. So I got three inches over there, so I'll add three inches to 2.10. Which will be three foot one. Mark another inch and a half. Another inch and a half. Stud, cripple, and stud on the end. That's all it needs. I'll build this one over here. For the height of it, it needs to go all the way up, right underneath the landing. So that was 142 and three quarters. I'm only gonna put one top plate on this, so I only need to take three inches off of that to get my studs. So that's 139 and three quarters for the studs. I'll get this one nailed together and put it in there. nailed on the line at the bottom so I'll go up top get it flush to here and then I have a line right there where it needs to go I'll double check that it's plumb too though but that's me that measurement comes right off of this wall there's the door all in I just have to cut the bottom plate out but I'll cut the bottoms out of all of them at the same time. Uh, now I can put all my blocking in these high walls. Same height as the blocking in the exterior. I'll just put it around all these interiors. Yeah, snap the chalk line across. So I'll start putting those blocks in all the way around. But first I want to make sure my corners are all good. So where I have a corner coming in, I need to put two nails every 16 inches the whole way up. Then on this corner, I just have a loose stud, so I gotta make sure I'll nail a block on here that'll hold it to this. That'll keep that nice and good. And then I'll make sure this is good before I cut the block for it. And same thing with this side. I'm gonna make sure this is all good. Just as long as these corners are good, then I can put all my other blocks in. Sometimes you gotta do this to your block.
for this corner. We'll just check what this is. It's 14 and a half. So I'll cut a block at 14 and a half and put it across here. So that block's holding it good that way. Now I'll put this block in here and it'll hold it good this way. And we just need one more in here, six inches. One more in here, two inches. Keep going in the closet. This one here, and then across this wall. Here's all the setter blocks in. Now they're gonna mount the TV right here, so I'm gonna put some two by 10 blocking in so they can screw the TV to it. There's all the TV backing. I don't have much two by 10 left, so I'll just use two rows of two by eight. Now in this bathroom, there's gonna be a pedestal sink right here. There's not a cabinet with the sink in it, so I have to put some backing so they can screw that too. And then they're gonna to wanna to hang a towel bar on this wall, so at four feet, I'm gonna put some blocking in the wall for that. Then the toilet's gonna to go right here. So they're gonna to wanna to screw the toilet paper holder to the wall right here. So I'll put some backing in for that too. So I'll put all that blocking in. There's the towel bar backing, four feet to the center of the two by six. There's backing for the pedestal sink. And there's backing for the toilet paper holder. So this is gonna be the kitchen. There's gonna be an island right here. And then there's gonna be cabinets along that wall. So the cabinet guys don't wanna look for the studs to screw to, so I'm gonna put three rows of blocking in for them. I'll put a row for the lower cabinets, then a row for the bottom of the upper cabinets, and then a row for the top of the upper cabinets. Three rows of blocking across there. And there's all the cabinet backing. I had to do all that work so the cabinet guys don't have to look for studs. I put drywall backing on top of this wall. I could put a 2x6 on hanging over both sides, but I'm pretty sure they're going to run some kind of heat duct up through here, and they're going to want to cut that right out at the top, and that'll make this wall loose. So instead, I'm just going to block across every two feet. So there's blocks on the corners, and then every two feet. Now I need some drywall backing up here. Put this in. Can screw the drywall to that. Now up here I didn't get a chance to finish my blocks every two feet the whole way so I'll put the last few blocks in here. I'll need one on the corner for drywall backing and one on that corner for drywall backing. Those ones are done that's all the drywall backing in here. This is all good all done. Over here, I'm going to need one on the corner, and then on this side, just one on that corner, and everything else is done. There's all the drywall backing done. Now I can cut out all the door plates. I can cut this plate out, except I screwed this up. I thought this was going to go flush here, but it's actually supposed to stick out four and a half inches here. So I'm just going to add three more two by fours onto here, and then I can cut the bottom plate out. So now I'll just go around with my chainsaw, cut all the bottom plates of the doors out. But before I do that, I just want to double check that they're plumb. So I'll put the level on them, just make sure they're good. If they're not, if they're out a little tiny bit, I'll just knock the bottom over to where it, it becomes good. So I'll cut these all out. And there's all the bottom plates cut out. And I still have no dense glass. So I'm just going to clean up in here and then it's time for a beer.